So I got this Hustler and um, I think it's a Diesel Z. It's got a RX-7 deck on it. Back there the sticker says 72 inches so it looks like it's going to be a 72 inch deck. And here's the model number. Now I typed the model number into Google <coughs> and I found a part schematic for this thing. It gives you part numbers and it gives you exploited view of how things go. Which is very good because on here and all there could be a washer and um, a bolt and you've got to know if there's a spacer under it and stuff. So the exploited view is really worth getting. Now the problem with this thing is they say every time they disengage the blade the belt wants to fly off. Now they changed these plastic guides for the tensioner pulley and that didn't seem to make no difference. So this is where we're at when I got here. Now here's a pulley on the back that they've taken off. You got this clutch here, electric clutch. So your belt's going to wrap around the clutch. It's got this pulley here that's at an angle. And then on up under here, which I don't know if I'll be able to show you or not, this pulley bolts on. Now here's the bracket that other pulley hits to. It, the pulley's on the other side and the bolt just comes through there. They say when they tighten that pulley down, it wouldn't spin. But we think we know what that problem is. Because there's two washers and one washer goes on the back as a spacer. So you have this, like this, and then this is a spacer. That way when it tightens down, it tightens down against the washer, not on the pulley. Okay. Now on this pulley here, if I put my finger in here, what I do is I try to push off to the side and maybe try to twist it a little bit. When you do that, you can feel the notchiness. You can kind of hear it. So I do believe they got this pulley new, right? Yep. So since they got it, we'll go ahead and put this one on because I can feel the bearing in that one. Okay, this will give you a better look. Here's the V pulley that's on here. And I was rubbing the belt. See, that's pretty good. It's not making much noise. And whenever I pull it like this and all, it seems smooth. Now, this is the back of the machine here. I don't know if you guys can tell. Moving forward, here's the bolt hole. This is where that other pulley goes. So, um, a washer, the pulley, a washer, and then the bolt goes through. Okay, we tighten it down. It seems okay. Good and tight. Okay, now this belt is going to come from the PTO up there. And the V side of the belt is going to fit in this back pulley. And then the belt's going to come from up there behind this idler pulley, the flat one. So the back of the belt fits on that side. So what it does, it comes up around here, loops up over the clutch, comes back down the other side, and comes around here and goes back to the front. So let's move up to the front. Now the belt's going to come up from the back. There's an idler pulley here that's probably too dark for you to see. This one's actually a plastic pulley. I don't know if it's been changed. There is a little bit of up and down play, but when I try to spin it and turn it, it all feels smooth. And spinning it, you don't hear it. Okay, now when that belt comes around there and does this thing, here's another pulley. And this one feels good, really tight, and no noise, and it feels very smooth. That leaves us with one more idler here. See, this one does have more play, and whenever I pick up 
and pull and try to turn it. You hear that? So if I spin that, so this one's definitely bad. So we've so far we found two bearings. One's a little iffy, and this one we know is bad. Now let's go on to like the spindles here. And there is some play in the spindle, okay. When you spin it, it does make some noise, so theoretically you probably should need some bearings in there. Let's try this outside one. It's got play. I hope you can hear that. That's the sounds of bad bearings. Let's go try the other outside spindle. Now here's this one. This one feels fairly tight. And it does have some noise, but it's not... It sounds like something's rubbing under there instead of the bearing. So this one here seems like the best spindle. The outside one over there seems like the worst one. A lot of times if you're throwing a belt, a lot of times it's either going to be a bearing and a pulley, or a pulley's messed up somehow, or one of them idlers or something might have got bent over and it's not tracking straight. So if you look at both of those idlers, they both look like they're pretty straight. Hard for me to show you. See, it's like this one here, that bolt's not bent. You know, I mean, it's not like the idler's almost touching the deck back here and three inches there. Same with the idler in the back. It looks fairly straight. So I think what we're going to do to start with is that idler back there seems okay. We'll leave it alone. We have an idler for here. So we're going to put this idler on. So we'll go from there and then see what they want to do with the bearings and the spindles. So we got a 15 16 so we're going to try to see if it'll loosen up. So it come off, that was good. So now we had, well you just took off a nut and a washer. Oop, I just lost it. And there was a washer right there on the bottom. Now that bolt where it comes up through here on the bottom will be another one of them bell washers and this bolt is fully threaded so it can be threaded into this. So now we're going to put the washer on there. We're going to put the pulley on. And a washer. Maybe. I heard it hit the floor. <laughs> Better than looking in the machine for it. And then we're going to put the nut on it and tighten it down. This is a lot better. Nice and quiet. Okay, talking to them, the back one's been replaced. This one's been replaced, the one on the slider. We just replaced this pulley and the flat idler on the back. The only one that hasn't been replaced is the V idler back there, but it felt okay, turned okay, and it didn't feel notchy. If you look at the ones on the side spindles here, see how the washer's cupped down in instead of up over? You want it to be bumped up in the middle because when you push the bolt down, tighten it down, it flattens that washer out. So whenever that washer's flattened out, it's kind of like a spring. It's always holding tension against that bolt. So if that bolt would start to come loose or something like that, you'd have a little bit of movement before the washer you know, completely uncollapsed. Here, I'll, I got a new one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, now, see that washer sets flat that way. I put it this way. See how it moves around? So the theory is, like I say, when the bolt tightens down, it pushes this washer out, flattens it, so that this is always trying to come back up, and that leaves tension on that bolt all the time. That way it can't come loose as easy. If you have problems 
where you have a bell washer and the bolt comes loose or something, first thing to do is replace the bell washer. That nut was 15 16 so it's a little loose. One in the back. I'm not sure what this one is. What is that? That's a 19. 19. That's about like a three quarter or something. Yeah. So what we're going to do, we're just going to take this bolt out and put that washer. See that washer was on wrong way. It's got to be this way so that whenever it pushes down, that way whenever it pushes down on there, um, it'll stay tight. And we just tighten it back down. No, we won't show you, but we're going to do the same to the other one. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and um, because we don't have no bearings or nothing we're going to go ahead and put the belt on it and change the mower blades oh, right here's a picture of how the belt goes come up around here we don't have that other idler that's what it's dotted so we're just going to come up here come around down we're just going to follow that diagram that's it. Uh, spring chain up. Yep. And then you gotta get the right tension on that chain. Yes. Pull on it some, and then you're gonna hook it in there. You don't want to go as tight as you can go because that puts a lot of extra side load on the bearings. But it's got to be on there tight enough that the belt won't slip. So I looked in the book, and it doesn't really tell that I could see how much tension ring to put on it. You know, whatever you have to to get it on there and get it tight without being outrageously tight. And if it's too loose, it'll slip. And slipping can actually wear out pulleys. So the only thing left up here is to put the guards on it. We're gonna talk to them about getting the bearings for these spindles. I like right here is one of the bolts that goes up and holds that pulley on that we just put on. And you can see here there's a Belleville washer under a bell washer. I'm calling them a bell washer. You also have a bell washer here. So we're going to put an impact and try to spin that out of there and see if we can um, get these off. So we're going to try this impact. Oh, I don't got it. I don't got it. Okay, I got it. Didn't want to drop the blade on your head. <laughs> I was trying to stay far enough back. Okay, now here's the blade we took off. And it's one of them drop down blades. And the blades that they got with the numbers is just a flat blade. Alright. If you look on here, it almost looks like these were kind of low to start with. So when we get the new blades on, we'll take a look at that and see if those blades ain't a little closer to where this baffle is. I believe we're correct having the flat blades on here instead of the ones that hump up like that. Because I don't do a lot on too many of these, but I believe that if you have that style blade, that center spindle, this bottom piece is, is a half inch or so shorter. And that makes up for that hump in it, where these are the long ones for a flat blade, it sets the blades down too far. So if you have those humped up blades in the middle, don't take me to the bank on it, but I believe your spindle, this piece here is going to be shorter. Um, also, if you notice, see on the edge of this, see how this is square? This outside edge does a lot of the cutting. And when blades start getting rounded back like this, they don't cut as well. So if you ever sharpen the blade, try to sharpen it, try not to round that edge back. So we're going to put these on. This, compared to the model numbers of the tractor and the parts list, this is the correct blade. And this blade for this one, yours could be different. Right there is that part number. 
Now we got the boat on there and we got the Belleville washer. I'm going to put this on there and see them wings. The lifts always go up. You can see it back there. They always go up away from the ground. If you put them with those sticking down, your blade's on upside down. Now look where the cutting edge is back there and all. And up here, it looks like it's a lot closer to that baffle than these here are. See how far down that cutting edge is? And look how close it is here. When I looked it up, that torque spec for that blade bolt was 118 foot-pounds, I believe. But look that up for yourself. Don't go by my word. See these baffles in there here to help airflow so that the air coming up sucks the grass up straight. It's like a razor would when you're shaving. But it sucks the grass up straight so that when these blades come by, it cuts them right off. I don't know if you can see this. See all that movement? If you look right in here, see all the movement? So the blades, or the bearings are definitely bad. Remember when you put this bell washer on here, the, the bottom's cup down, you know, the high spot goes to the head of the boat and the concave part goes to the blade. Now we're going to start this thing up. We're going to turn the blades on. And then we're just going to disengage them and see if the belt stays on. But we're still, really we need to do the spindle bearings to be right. stayed on there. So the belt stayed on. You've seen it was jumping just a wee little bit, but this belt's been thrown off here several times, so that might be the belt jumping. You don't want it to jump a lot. These are heavy duty enough, but when they start flexing and bouncing and pulling the spring really bad and all, a lot of times they'll rub right here where they connect. It'll produce heat, and then they'll break the spring and fly. And he said they did lose his spring last year before they changed the belt that pulley and this tensioner stuff. They also changed them plastic slides on there. They're not hard to do. Um, if you flip this back up down and then put the covers on this thing would be ready to mow. Um, like I say we're going to see what they want to do about the three spindles. Now if you look at this Someone's hit something and got a pretty good chunk out of that blade. 